So here was the first question I got from, from one of the audience members, and it was really powerful. They said, you said a complete understanding of living systems. A complete, what, what about behaviors over time that we have, you know, that we eat, what we do, the, what we expose ourselves to? How can we ever have a complete understanding of a living system? Yeah, that's a great point. And so maybe complete was a little strong. But I think okay. with all the types of uh, all the, on that. I said, all, that's but, a really but I good think point. the types of technologies you're hearing presented today are going to exactly get to your point or the point of the, the question is that we're going to start being able to collect all this information longitudinally, and that's going to be the big game in the future. It isn't just taking snapshots at the doctor's office, but you monitoring your system longitudinally over time, and then integrating that, combining that with populations to achieve what we think could be a more complete understanding. So essentially, the the simulations have a role to play because because essentially they're so fast, they allow us to do so many different trials in the silicon as opposed to in the real world, and then we ultimately have to go to animals because that's the next step. Is that what happens? Exactly. So with the models, what all this sophisticated mathematical modeling is doing is enabling you to place a better bet, right? Enabling you to take more of the information into account, make better informed decisions about where to place your bets, where to focus your lab, or where to focus your clinical trial. And by placing those better bets, you're increasing your probability of success downstream. So it's Jerry. Brophy's uh, personalized certainty. This is another yeah. dimension of that sort of personalized certainty. One last question I want to sort of focus in on. You, I couldn't let it go. You said that we're storytelling creatures. We okay, well, that's sort of what we're doing here, so that makes a little bit of sense there. But you sort of felt that the stories were in the way. I, I got this sense for you to say, well, gee, these stories are in the way of a much richer or better understanding. But we're obviously not going to change who we are. So it sounds to me like maybe we need better stories. Well, when I looked at your pictures, and they were amazing graphics, Eric, whoever did all Thank that you. work, they were just, I mean, they, I saw a city there. You know, I saw New York. I saw a city with thousands of people, roads, police, fire. I saw people talking to people. Maybe the metaphor here is if we think of all of these diseases as if they were occurring in a city, just putting a traffic light on the corner isn't going to make a difference, or putting a new bus route, or changing five people who stand in one place. Maybe if we could come up with better stories, better role models, like a, look, you're all, disease is like a giant city. We change one or two things, the city just travels on its own way. Might that be a fair sort of model, and, or maybe there's a better one that I've missed? I love it. I love it. I think that's exactly right. And the idea is to get us out of the simple storytelling mode and have our minds engaged, just like the movies, which can be very, very complicated, how to present all of this information in ways that engage, engages your mind to come up with a better story, to come up with something that's more realistic, more actionable, or that has a higher probability of success. So I think you've hit it right so, on the So mark. maybe if we said New York City is broken, we'd say, well, what do you mean New York City is broken? Well, it has this disorder, no different than my body has a yeah. disorder. It's just as complicated as if I were saying, well, New York City is broken. Of course, New York City is not broken, but right. would be against that. Okay, thank you very it. much, All Eric. Right. That was Thank great. you.